let's turn now to the basic report structures and designs. I'm going to flip over to report definitions. And you can see that, as I mentioned earlier, there's a whole list of default reports that come with Management Reporter right out of the box. And there's some of the basic reports that a lot of accountants and senior leadership, um, finance committees, uh, people like that, that they really like to see. And I'm going to take a look at the balance sheet. I can see that balance sheet by double clicking on it, the basics of the report. And what this page is going to show you is the company name that the report is attached to, the detail level, and what rows and columns are attached to this report. Every report has to have a row definition and a column definition. The tree is optional, but the row and column must be there for the report to generate. I'd like to show you the building blocks before I talk about the output and distribution and report options. You can open up the row definition and column definitions in a couple of different ways. I can click on these buttons right here that will open the row or the column. They're also up here at the top. And I can also come down here to row definitions and see all the different row definitions that already exist. You can see that we've made some, and then there's the default definitions. Something similar for column definitions. I find it easier if I'm working with an already established report to just grab that straight from that area. So if I click on this button here, it opens up the row definition that's attached to this balance sheet report. And you can see that the setup looks very similar to Excel. It's got columns and it's got rows. And the default reports are fabulous that they're already set up using account categories. That's great if you haven't started yet building your reports in Management Reporter or if you have all of your categories defined in, uh, in your GP correctly, in your uh, finance account cards. Most people don't, or they've added categories, or they've made other changes that it makes them not able to use this account category in this report. And that's fine. This is where the customization comes in. What you can do is this row is set to cash, and the account category is cash. But if your account categories aren't set up that way, then we need to try something else. We need to find your cash accounts and narrow those down. And you can see when I open this up, this mirrors our GL structure with a division, an account, and a department. I'm going to open up the account area, and I'm going to find those GLs that reflect cash. And I can see the first one is 1100. And in creating a range, I want to choose the last one, which is in this case is 1140. I can click OK, and you can see that I've got a range there. However, we also have an account category of cash. So if I was to leave this report this way, it would pull these accounts that are between this natural account range of 1100 and 1140 but it would also pull any account that is in the account category of cash. That would pull too much information. We would most likely get duplicates. So I want to delete this account category, and I can do that by highlighting it and simply clicking delete on my keyboard. Now I'll only have the GL accounts from 1100 through 1140. I am going to cancel out of this because I don't want to keep those results. Um, the account categories work for us for this report. But you could also um, you pop in divisions or departments if you wanted. You can see that there's a plus sign over here. Um, so if you wanted to also add account number 160, you could do that as well. And you can do that just by typing that into the box. Okay, 
It's a lot of information in here. Your rows down the side, you use those to allow you to make calculations. And we'll talk about the calculations later on. But this is what guides you to make those sorts of calculations. The description column is going to be something that you type in. And you can see that there's formatting options up here, just like when you're in Word or Excel. You can bold things. You can italicize. Um, you can also indent. If you wanted these two to be subcategories under current assets, you can indent by clicking on that row and increasing the indent. If you decide, oh, I don't like that, you have two options. You can either decrease the indent, or if you make a mistake and don't know what to do, you can come up to Edit and click Undo, and it'll take you back to where you were. The Format Code column is a pretty important column, at least to me. I like to make things pretty when I make reports, and this is where you would do that. It also tells you what type of column you want the related formula to be. There's lots of options in here. Let's take a look at a few of them. You can have a total, which is going to work similarly to a sum, but they have to all be in a range. So you can see in this instance, we have a total, and it's going to total these rows 160 through 220. You can also have calculations, and that might be where you subtract one area or, or multiple areas from another area. So when you, when you subtract your expenses from your revenue, say, on an income statement, you would want to use a calculation. You can align things on the left side, on the right side, on the center. You can insert page breaks. And then we have some underscores, which are always good for subtotals. Um, there's a few different lines. There's thin lines, thick lines, dotted lines. You can put boxes around things if you want to call out special attention to a particular subtotal or total. And it's worth just messing around with some of those to, uh, to get the result that you're looking for. Um, the most common one, however, is going to be this very simple underscore when it comes to the line formatting. Column D is related formulas, rows, or units. And basically what this does is it tells you what to do with the format code in C. So we've told this one to total. We've got a description here that's saying to bring total fixed assets as a description into that line. And I do not have any calculations on this report, but we'll take a look at that later. Uh, the number here next to the underscore line, it's a very cool feature. It basically says that if this total on line 250 is zero, to not print the line. And then it won't print any of this. Uh, so you don't get a report that has a bunch of lines with no data above it. Format override will allow you to enter, if you wanted to have a dollar sign at the top of every category, of every section, that's where you could do that at. There's also another place that you can do that, and I'll show you that as well. But you can see that here you can, you can add percentage signs, you can put in a custom sign. Um, most often currency and percentage are the ones that are used here. Normal balance is important. Um, because most of the time your reports um, you want in positive numbers. Uh, revenue is generally a credit, but you, want, you might want that to show up as a positive number. So if the normal balance is a credit and you want that to show as a positive number, then you want to make sure that that's a C there. And that's really the only options. It's either C or it's blank, but that will change the sign. Print control is another important area. You can suppress printing of particular rows. So if I wanted to suppress printing all the way down and just have line 250 appear, all I'd have to do is make these non-printing rows. And the first row that'll print would be this row here that's total cash and cash equivalents. 
You can also do other things um, to suppress if it's all zeros, suppress rounding, uh, leave zero columns as blank instead of putting zeros in, um, all sorts of fun formatting options. And then the link to financial dimensions we already went over. This is where you would want to put in your particular GL range or account category that you want for that particular row. Now that we've discussed the row definition a little bit, let's switch and talk about the column definitions. I'm going to open that up by clicking on the box next to the column definition. And it's going to show me that this is how our columns are going to look. You must have a description column in every column definition. It does not have to be in column A. You can put the, column, the description column in the center if you wanted to have current year on the left, your description, and then your prior year on the right. That's perfectly fine as long as you have a description column. You can have as many columns as you would like. You could put 12 months of data um, each month in a column if you wanted. There's a header row at the top, and the best practices is to make this as generic as possible. I'm using the auto text of fiscal year, which will automatically populate the current fiscal year that I'm in. I don't have to go in and change that every year. I don't have to go in and change all my 2015s to 2016s. It's a huge time saver if you're able to use those. And I highly recommend it. You can also type things in directly. This is a variance column, and we've just simply typed in variance so that we know that that's the column header name. The column type, there's a few options. FD is financial dimensions. That's basically the information that it's getting out of GP or SL or whatever system that you're coming from. A calculation column is exactly that. It's a column that you're performing calculations in. Much like the row format, you can subtract one column from another. So if I have prior year and current year, I can subtract one from the other to find the variance, which is exactly what this particular column definition is showing. Here's our description column. And the next one that I'm going to bring up to you is an attribute column. We actually have one on this report. It's over here. You can't have any calculations on an attribute column. And we're telling it that we want an attribute of journal entry. That means that we should be able to drill down to that level. The book code, the attribute category. Um, here's our attribute category because it's the attribute column. It's book code if it's not an attribute column. Our options here are, are actual numbers straight from your system or budgeted numbers. And you should have a budget for every single budget that you've ever uploaded into your system, into GP. You want to make sure that you grab the correct budget. The fiscal year. Here again, you would want to leave this as generic as possible. Base basically means that it's the current year that you're in. You can also subtract. So for the prior year, it's going to be the base fiscal year minus one, like you see here in column C. Period works the same way. Your base period is the period that you're currently in. So this is going to pull, if, if we're running a report for January of 2016, it's going to pe pull period 1 for 2016, and it's going to pull period 1 for 2015. You could actually um, have multiple periods, and that's how the rolling reports are created. You have a base, base minus 1, and then base minus 2 would be in the next column, and so on. Periods covered. Periodic would be for a monthly. And that would, um, you'd want to use that if you're just pulling a, a particular month, so just January, just February. And your year-to-date, of course, would be your year-to-date totals. You can see that both of our columns here are year-to-date totals. The formula, here's where if you have a calculation column, this is where you would enter your formula. You can see here that we have an if-then statement. So we're saying that if B is less than C, or sub 
subtract b from c if it's less than zero. And here we have a, sim a more simple formula where we're just going to um, divide column D by column C to get our percent variance. You basically, you don't have to enter an equal sign or anything like you do in Excel. You just type the formula that you want. The column width, you can play around with this if you want. Auto fit will increase the size of the column to the largest item in that column. That seems to work the best. You can, you can play with this. You can type in an actual number. Um, but it may cut off some of your information if it's not wide enough. And then down here, we've simply changed this currency override to a custom currency. And basically, we've made that a percent sign because this is a percent variance. So we, we don't want that to be a dollar sign. We want it to be a percent. And that is the basics on the columns. I'm just going to close out of there.